Today we will be learning about portraiture as an art form. A portrait is a painting, photograph, sculpture, or other artistic representation of a person in which the face and its expression is the focus. The artist often attempts to capture the likeness, personality, and even the mood of the person. A portrait often shows a person looking directly at the painter or photographer in order to most successfully engage the subject with the viewer. Portrait art was practiced during the earliest civilizations as shown by these Egyptian Fayum mummy portraits which date back to the first century BC. In the 14th and 15th century Portraits were usually commissioned by the wealthy and often featured kings, queens, nobles, and other important citizens. In the 17th century, artists began to paint everyday people. The Girl with the Pearl Earring by Johannes Vermeer is a beautiful example of this trend. You might be wondering how long it took for a painter to paint a portrait. Painters in that time had their subjects sit for multiple sittings, sometimes lasting for several days in order to get an initial sketching done. Some artists required extensive hours and days of sitting and viewing their subjects in order to capture their personality and likeness. Let's go back in time and watch a wealthy nobleman sitting for a portrait. Does, does my hair look all right, Anne? Should, should I move my collar a little bit to the right? Or should I tilt my head here or there? Do you think my sword is sharp enough? Does it look like I am manly enough? Servants, I am very hungry. Fetch me a turkey leg and a glass of wine, will you? Uh, do I get a break? Hmm. Anyone? No! This is taking way too long. Woman, are you done with the portrait? Zap! Zap! Yes, yes, my disciples. Wait, who made a portrait of you? No, that's all right. Okay, so maybe that was an exaggeration of what used to happen. I'm quite sure the subject of the painting got to take breaks and go to bed at night. One of the best known portraits in the Western world is Leonardo da Vinci's painting titled Mona Lisa. It's said that Leonardo worked on Mona Lisa for at least four years, maybe longer. Not continuous work, of course, but developing the painting over time. When photography was invented in the mid-1800s, it was a game-changer for the art of portraiture. Now an artist could capture the essence of an individual in a matter of seconds. Lighting and posing became more important than ever. Here are the works of some famous photographers who are creating amazing portraits today. A self-portrait is a painting that an artist has painted of themselves. This is a special kind of portrait because the artist is showing the world how they see themselves and their personality. With the invention of digital cameras and smartphones, you don't have to be a painter to capture your own likeness anymore. Modern day self-portraits are called selfies and we have a gallery of several rooster spring tigers who would like to share their selfies.
Today, we will be working on a collaborative portrait. A collaborative portrait is one in which many individuals have contributed pieces or sections to the artwork. When added together, these different interpretations and colorful contributions make a diverse and unexpected depiction of an individual. In class today, you and your classmates will collaborate on a portrait of your teacher. Each of your teachers gave the art appreciation team a favorite photo or let us take a picture of them, and then we converted them to sketches and enlarged them. The next step was to divide the portraits into 24 pieces that you and your classmates can all color. Step 1. Color on the side of your paper that does not have a number on it. The number will be on the back of your drawing. Step 2. Examine your section of the portrait and decide how you are going to color it. If you get a blank piece of paper, don't be disappointed. This is an opportunity to use one or maybe two bright colors to frame your teacher's face. If you get a piece of paper and you have no idea what portion of your teacher you are coloring in, that is okay. Just pretend like you are coloring in a coloring book. Choose two, maybe a maximum of three colors and color in the spaces however you want to. Lastly, if you get a piece and you know exactly which portion of your teacher's face you are coloring, feel free to use colors that you wouldn't ordinarily use. For instance, you might leave the white of the eye white, but have fun with different colors when you're working on the iris or the skin around the eye. This is a great opportunity to practice shading with your colored pencil. Make sure your pencil is sharp and turn it on its side using long strokes to fill in color. You can also turn your pencil the opposite way and do a cross hatching style, which will create a richer color. Step four, when you have completed your square, ask an art volunteer if there are any more squares to color. If not, they will give you a white piece of paper and you can work on a self portrait with the colored pencils. Use this opportunity to experiment with color, depicting the mood and personality of your self portrait. After all 24 squares have been completed, your volunteers will piece your teacher's portrait together like a puzzle. First, they will apply small sticky squares to each corner of each section. Then they will start placing the squares on a black piece of paper, starting with number one in the top left-hand corner and going across in rows of four. Your finished collaborative portrait will hang alongside other teacher portraits at the Spring Art Show. Be sure to come and check out the gallery. Because this project truly was a collaboration, we have many thank yous to give out. Thank you to the actors who took us back 400 years in time. Thank you to those of you who contributed selfies and many thanks to all of you teachers who gave us your photos. We look forward to seeing the finished portraits at the Spring Art Show.